a discrepant event. It's everyday happenings. It's things that happen that you don't know why they happen. It could be that your car won't start, your refrigerator goes out, your computer won't work. Any kind of situation that makes you wonder why or how something happened is a discrepant event. In academics, discrepant events, of course, are not everyday happenings, but discrepant events about why uh, things happen in the physical world, in the biological world, and in social studies, it's mainly things that happen in the disciplines like history and geography. It starts off usually with some sort of scenario that describes the situation, makes it personal, and then leaves something out so that the students uh, wonder why something happened. Uh, the discrepant event is designed to give people practice in solving these kind of problems in safe educational situations so they can get better at being scientists and discoverers of information. Then when they have to do it in real life they will at least have had some experience in ex uh, dealing with problems that they wondered why something happened and then pursue knowledge and information through questioning. So the discrepant event is a simulation that allows people to develop thinking skills, higher level thinking skills, particularly the ability to ask the right questions, to find information, to make hypotheses, guesses as to why something happened, and then pursue information by asking a series of questions. The lesson that's a discrepant event attempts to limit students to ask questions that can be answered with yes or no answers. And the reason for that is that it forces the student to think through the process, to think through the situation, and formulate a question where the teacher is not providing the information, but they are providing the information. So it's, again, a good practice for formulating the right kind of questions. You can also have students do research on the internet in books. They can bring to bear on this problem uh, any kind of information that they can find. Plus, they ask the teacher these basic questions. Uh, discrepant event can be one that uh, the teacher knows the answer or at least the probable answer, and you usually attempt to put it in terms of a probable answer since that's what good scientists do. And some questions can be open-ended where the teacher nor anyone else knows the answer to why something happens. Uh, this is something that can carry forward to a student's everyday life when they grow up. Because if they learn to do this, if they learn to identify the problem, to hypothesize, gather information, prove or disprove the hypotheses and come to a, a conclusion based on information. If they are a mechanic, they can confront a person coming in with a car and instead of making some wild guess as to what's wrong with the car, they can proceed to identify the problem, have several hypotheses, maybe it's the fuel system, maybe it's the electrical system, ask a series of questions to try to find information. Somewhat like the Click and Clack brothers do on PBS radio where people call in with mysteries about why their car is doing what it does. And what they usually do is immediately proceed to asking a series of questions to find out the parameters of the problem. Is the car parked uphill, downhill? What's the temperature? Does it do it when you're going 40 miles an hour? In other words, they try to limit it to a fewer set of hypotheses. Then they usually make guesses based on that information and proceed to, uh, if there are mechanics and the car is there, to test it out. Uh, so from a mechanic or a student who's going to be a doctor, 
someone comes in with some ailment and you want to know why they have that set of symptoms, it's the same process as a mechanic would go through or a computer technician who uh, comes in to see if there's a software problem or a person at home who has a computer that won't run. They identify the problem first, it won't run, and then start hypothesizing. Well, maybe it's because the software is degraded, or maybe it's because it's not plugged in, or maybe it's because the power source is out, or the internet is not connected. They make those hypotheses, and then they start gathering data by checking the plugs, checking the software, running the spy program to see if there's something on the computer they don't want, and slowly eliminate the hypotheses until they get down to one that maybe will fix the problem. And then they test that hypothesis to see if the problem is fixed. If it's fixed, then that's the answer. So this is a technique started in school, practice hopefully all through the grades, all the way from first grade where students might just identify the problem and make some guesses, all the way up to high school and college where they might go through the entire scientific process in trying to find an answer to the discrepant event.